Hello everyone. Today we are going to work on the SAM Module 2 Project 1A. And we can see we have the SAM dialog box open and if you haven't already done so you can download the instructions and download the start file which I have done and make sure when you open that start file that your name is pre-filled in on the documentation sheet. The first thing I will do is save as and I will choose the desktop and I am going to click one time at the very end of that file name and backspace once and change the one to a two so that my file name meets the conventions uh, dictated by SAM for grading. Let's start. You're an assistant manager at Rough Stitch Clothing at, which happens to be a boutique clothing store and you have been asked to generate a report detailing some financials. First thing we do, switch to the profit analysis sheet by clicking on the sheet tab and we are also asked to apply the office theme to our workbook. That will be the page layout tab Far to the left are the themes. When the themes drop down, I find Office at the upper left of the gallery. And when I click on Office, some of the attributes of my page will change because themes, remember, are collections of fonts, effects, and colors which have been designed to work well together and then given a name. Now we're going to update the column and rows in this sheet to, again, make it look uh, more professional and appropriate. Uh, step 2A, change the width of column A to 15.00. Let's choose the column by having that hollow plus sign change to a downward arrow as we move the mouse left click and the column is now selected. We can then look on the home tab in the cells group for the format tool and we are going to be formatting a column width and type in that exact value 15 point zero zero and the column adjusts to that size. Step 2B asks us to apply auto fit to row 1. So let's select row 1. You notice that now the dark arrow was facing left to right at the cell uh, designator 1 and I clicked so the row is selected. Auto fit is a choice again off of the formatting tool. This time we're going to auto fit row height and that height changes to uh, allow us to see that entire heading properly. Now we're going to move in step 3 to cell B9. That's the intersection of column B and row 9 and we are asked to create a formula using the sum function to total the values in B5 to B8. One way to do that is to come up here to the editing group on the home tab, choose sum from the auto sum tool, but you'll notice there's a little bit of a problem. Excel guessed what particular cells we wanted to sum together to create this total and it guessed cells B4 to B8. That is not the correct range. The range should be B5 to B8. So one way we can correct that 
is to position our mouse so that it's a diagonal double arrow and then shorten that rectangle so now that it B5 to B8 shows as the range and then when we let go the range is correct and I can hit enter to allow that sum to calculate. We're asked to copy the formula you just created in that cell B9 to the range C9 to E9. This should be familiar from the Module 1 project. Copying a formula is another wording for replicating the pattern. And how do we replicate a pattern? We use the fill handle. Let's move our mouse so that that hollow plus changes to the dark plus sign. Left click our mouse and spread that range across the designated columns. When we let go, voila, the sums occur for each column. Now we're asked to format the range B9 to E9, but I've already done that and I'm sure you can remember how to do that from the Module 1 project. So I'll move to step 5. I'm going to change the fill color of the range A9, so A intersecting 9, through E9. Remember how to select a range? Go to the end of the range, shift and click. Now the range is selected and the fill color is the paint bucket tool up here on the home tab and I want to choose yellow. The fourth column, first row of the standard colors and I'll click and that takes effect. Now on that same range I'm told to apply a top and thick bottom border, cell border. The borders looks like this little, I think it looks like a window frame, and there are choices, many, many choices. We need to find top and thick bottom border, click to apply. So now we will move to step 7, where you want to calculate some business statistics for each of the years across the departments. So in B10, we are asked to create a formula using the average function. So the best way to accomplish uh, calculating the average in this field is to draw over the range B5 through B8 and then off of the auto sum window choose average. We can double check that it is correct by clicking back in B10 and see that in the formula bar we, we have equals average B5 through B8. We will again use the fill handle to spread that formula across. I've already filled in the highest using the max function and lowest using the min function. And I can use the fill handle to spread each of those values across as well. In step 10, you need to determine the profit generated each year across all departments. So we're going to start in cell B22, the intersection of B and 22. And we're going to create a formula without using a function, similar concept to one we used in module 1 where we're going to subtract B19 from B9. If you are creating a formula from scratch, you must start with the equal sign. 
and in this case we're going to have equals B9 I will use the pointing method B9 I'll click in B9 B9 drops into the formula and I am going to subtract B19 and I can choose enter when I am finished and the formula calculates for me copy the formula to C22 through E22 by using the fill handle. Now here's a concept that's very valuable in the spreadsheet world. It's conditional formatting. Uh, I hope that you've uh, studied it in the training and here's a chance to put it into use. We want to apply a conditional formatting rule to the range B22. So I'll click in B22 to E22. I'll just make sure that I have the correct range selected. And I want to use the new rule option. That's home tab, styles group, conditional formatting, and I'm going to use the new rule option. In that new rule option, we want to select the rule type format only cells that contain. Format only cells that contain. That's the second choice here. And I want to change the rule description to format only cells with a cell value less than zero. So I will type in the zero. And I want that those cells that meet that criteria to have a fill co color of red. So I will go to the fill and choose red as the fill, click OK, click OK. Ah, and you can see that the formatting rule indeed was applied to cells, only those cells that met the condition of being less than zero. The beauty of implementing conditional formatting is if your spreadsheet changes in the future other values throughout here and one that makes one of these dip below zero the formatting will automatically kick in and apply very very nice I've already modified the worksheet format to be portrait and margins narrow. I'm sure you can uh, figure that out by looking at the page layout tab. And we need to add a header to the worksheet. So that is in the insert group, header and footer. And in the center section, we are asked to enter rough stitch clothing profit analysis. Make sure you spell everything exactly as specified in the instruction sheet. And now we will be returning to the normal view. Notice I picked normal off of the uh, tools at the bottom of the workbook, the worksheet. All right, now we are going to click in cell A1, which is a merged cell, and check our spelling using review spelling. There is a misspelled word, the suggestion, the first suggestion of the word payroll with two L's at the end is 
what I'd like, so I will change to that spelling, and that was it. I'm good to go. Switch to the employee discount worksheet. That's find the tab at the bottom, choose employee discount, and we are told that all employees forgot to enter their IDs, so you need to input this information and in cell D4 we are referenced to that location so that's the intersection of column D and row 4 and asked to enter the text MA in capitals dash WO in capitals and 010 you can see that this employee ID is following a pattern. It appears that it's the employee's first initial of their first name, first initial of their last name, and then the department code and their, well, actually the first two letters of the apartment they, that they work in, and then the department code. Well, we want to let the computer do what the computer is good at. And there's a feature that will help us fill out the rest of these cells based on the pattern. It's called Flash Fill. Okay. Flash Fill will analyze patterns and fill in things uh, automatically. So let's go to the data tab and look at flash fill and the rest of the column is completed for us. Very, very nice. The range F3 through F7 is an indication of a employee discount but it's given in decimal format and we want it to appear in percentage format. I can right click to get a context menu, use format cells, choose percentage, and I am asked the percentage to be zero decimal places. So I will change the places to zero, click OK, and now that column appears in the proper format. The last two things that you need to do is format the date to be a short date, which I've already done, and change the page orientation of the sheet to landscape. And I have done that as well. I believe these uh, hints and techniques and skills that we've gone over will allow you to be successful 100% so in the Rough Stitch Clothing Project.